Namaste and welcome to Dr. Shah's clinic. In this video, we are going to answer uh, another very important question. And the question is, what are the permanent causes of male infertility? So, uh, permanent causes of male infertility are basically, you know, conditions where treatment strategies for uh, male infertility are exceedingly complex and these are all definitive causes of male factor infertility and in some instances what basically happens is patients with permanent male infertility causes actually have to go through advanced treatment strategies like third party reproduction which involves the use of donor sperm donor embryo program or in some cases even adoption so it's really hard on the patient you know from a psychological perspective uh, patients you know unduly suffer and you know uh, hopefully uh, and thankfully these conditions are not that common they are not they are fairly rare but we do come across these cases then and there about 1 to 5 percent of the time uh, some patients have you know uh, a permanent cause of male infertility which is very very hard to treat so we're going to discuss four conditions that you know actually lead to permanent male infertility and they are as follows okay the first condition is bilateral undescended testis now in some patients what basically happens is testicular descent that is what basically what happens is in most healthy men the testicular descent is complete at the time of birth that means both the testis will be descended and into the sac at the time of birth but in some patients what basically happens is both the testis are not not descended in the sac the uh, the treating doctors sometimes miss it and when the child becomes an adult he'll be a healthy male to look at of course but when he becomes an adult if you do his if you do a semen analysis it will show azospermia and if you do a physical examination we you are normally shocked because you don't see the testis at all so here uh, what the biggest problem here is there's no treatment for such patients because the testis has to be has to be fixed before the first year or before the first birthday if it is not fixed before the first year, as soon as the child is born, by the time the child has become an adult, there is no scope for recovering the fertility potential or the fertility of the patient. A testis that does not descend becomes dysfunctional and cannot produce spermatozoa and most of the time what happens is also a small risk of cancer. So what we do is we trace out the testis, we do a scan, CT scan abdomen, find out where the testis is and we remove it and these patients have, to have no other choice but to go for adoption or th third party reproduction with donor sperm. So that depends on the patient, right? So that's one condition which is a permanent cause of male infertility. It's very, very hard on the patient. Okay, the second condition which is a permanent cause of male infertility is a condition called Kleinfelter syndrome. Now, most healthy men have 46XY, that is they have uh, the total set of chromosomes is 46XY. The Y chromosome is what determines maleness, that is a male is a male because of Y chromosome because the Y chromosome is what contains the genes for sperm production. In some individuals uh, or individuals who, ha who have the genetic condition called Kleinfelter syndrome, there is 47XXY, that is that means there is an additional pair or an additional X chromosome an additional X chromosome and in these patients what basically happens is by the time these men grow up and hit puberty during the puberty instead of sperm production kicking in there's an atrophy of the testis the testis shrinks there is improper hair growth there's no proper uh, you know uh, pubertal development there's complete absence of sperm production these patients you know have IQ difficulty with learning that they, they have difficulties with their IQ uh, they grow they grow up tall they, they are somewhat slightly on the fatter side they may be obese their hair distribution is very poor and their testis is very very small soft and firm so for these patients again natural fertility is usually not possible because by the time they're adults you do a semen analysis for these patients you're not going to find any spermatozoa in these patients so here again we have to resort to different treatment strategies to overcome the fertility problem now the thir the third uh, the um, third condition you know which can lead to permanent uh, male infertility is a condition called uh, seminiferous tubular failure due to a y chromosome micro deletion so li like we had just discussed a minute back y chromosome is what determines maleness because the y chromosome contains genes for sperm production now there is a region of the y chromosome called azf a b and c now, if the AZF region has a deletion in either AZF A or AZF B or AZF C region, basically what happens is sperm production gets gets completely dysregulated. And for such patients, what's going to happen is well, everything will be normal. The patient will look well androgenized. He'll be he'll look like a healthy male. He'll have good erection. Everything will be okay. But if you do a semen analysis, the semen analysis is going to show azospermia. The FSH is going to be very very high. Now, the normal FSH value should be less than seven point five. For these patients. FSH is the hormone that causes sperm production by the way but for these patients the FSH becomes very high and the testis is very small as well as soft. Mm -hmm. The higher the value of FSH the lesser the chance of retrieving sperm surgically from the testis. So this is again 
a permanent cause of male foot male infertility and thankfully this is seen in only about 1 to 5 percent of men who come to a fertility clinic right now the um, uh, the next uh, you know um, permanent uh, cause of male infertility that we should discuss is a condition called globozoospermia in patients who are globozoospermic again these men are very healthy to look at they have no problems with their sexual function but when you do a semen analysis and if you do something and in the semen analysis when you do a sperm morphology assessment that is where we look at the shape of the spermatozoa basically what happens is these men produce spermatozoa without the acrosomal cap now the acrosomal cap is very important because that's what allows the sperm to bind to the egg and fertilize the egg now if the cap is not present what's going to happen is the sperm cannot bind to the egg the sperm cannot bind to the egg fertilization is not possible and for these men who are diagnosed with globozoospermia, they cannot become, they cannot father children naturally at all. So that's the next condition. The last condition I want to discuss, and I think we have covered most of the conditions with respect to permanent cause of male infertility. The last condition is a condition called 9 plus 0 syndrome. Now for these patients, once again, just like globozoospermia, these men are going to be very healthy to look at. There's going to be absolutely no problems with their sexual function. But if you do a semen analysis, once again, you're going to find sperms that are all dead the sperms are not going to be moving at all and that's why the condition gets its name called 9 plus 0 syndrome the 0 refers to the absence of the microtubule that is present in the sperm tail so if you look at the sperm tail the sperm tail has a 9 plus 2 structure so there's a central microtubule and then there are multiple microtubules that surround the central microtubule which is responsible for the sperm motility if the central microtubule is absent the sperms that are produced are not going to move at all. Although they are alive, they are not moving. So this is a condition called 9 plus 0 syndrome. It's very rare, but we do see it. I've personally seen maybe about 5 or 6 patients with, in the last 6 years of my practice, 5 or 6 patients with 9 plus 0 syndrome. And again, this is a condition which is quite hard to treat. And we have to go with the ICSI or IVF ICSI, uh, force fertilized egg uh, for treating these patients. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the permanent causes of male infertility. This video was not meant to scare anyone, but you have to be well informed and we have to be practical, you know, when we treat such patients. It's important to be knowledgeable and aware of these conditions as well. Uh, because most patients, you know, most clinicians, you know, fail to even establish a diagnosis with respect to male factor infertility. Thankfully, these conditions are rare. It's only seen in about 1-5% to 5 of patients that, you know, walk into a, at least to a male fertility clinic. So, um, please share this video with all your friends and loved ones. It may be beneficial to someone you may know who is suffering from a male fertility problem. And please like, comment and subscribe. My name is Dr. Shah. Vanakkam Namaste and see you soon in the next video.